Right everyone, Celtic 4, Hearts 1. We are nine points clear at the top of the Premiership. Our nearest rivals only have three games to go, Stevie. They can only get level and points with us. Our goal difference is much better. The job is done. You can tell that from the reaction there from the players at full time. And I feel a little bit emotional. And it's not all about John Henderson coming on at half time. <laughs> Beat me to it there. That was uh, the, the highlight of the game was definitely seeing big John Henderson. Do you want to just spend the next 20 minutes chatting about darts? Yes, probably. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't want anybody to turn their channel off even more just because I'm on and they see me. But that was fantastic today. And like Hamish, I'm just going to go on record and say uh, I was bursting into tears at certain bits of that game today. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. That was emotional. And do you know what? That's what football's all about, though. Will we come back to all of this stuff or will we try and chat about the game? And try I, and analyse it the best we can. I don't even know what the score was. What was the score? It was 4-1. 4-1, right. So, Hart scored early on. This guy is apparently... Very, very nervous at that stage, were you? Well, no wonder. Like the first, oh, first few minutes, I'm sitting and like hearts were pressing us and they score. We couldn't get rid of them. We couldn't find yeah. like any. There was no method in our play. There was no plan. It was just all over the place. And that was it. I kept turning around to John, who I was sitting next to, not McGinley from this that. channel. I know. <laughs> so it's, it was a nightmare. It was a hard day for me, and it's all about me. But first ten minutes was just uh, all over the place, quite staggered. But then I did say it's just about us finding the rhythm and letting the game settle because Hearts wouldn't be able to keep that pressing and tempo up all game. Yeah. And I think we saw that. But honestly, massive shout out to the best footballer in Scotland, Kyle McGregor, dragged us through that. What an important player, yeah. and he was massive for us. Even he dragged us through it. And when we got that equaliser, we never looked back and I was very confident that we were going to go on to score a few. It's funny you bring up McGregor because I had the exact same thought. I mean, people talk about that run he had at Ibrox, which was obviously massive. He had a similar one today. It didn't lead to a goal this time. I don't know if you remember it. He was running up the left-hand side, mm -hmm. crossed it, and I think it went out for a corner. corner. Or, or, yeah, a corner. And that was McGregor all over. It was McGregor driving Celtic forward and it came at a time when we looked really uncertain. And I think from that point, Celtic were completely dominant in that match. For me, that's more evidence of why he's our player of the year. I know Carter Vickers has, has been excellent, and I know you know so many other players, Kyogo, Jota, Rogic, etc., have been great. But McGregor, I think, has just been the key to Celtic this season. And that run up the left wing for me, while everyone else was floundering a little bit, everyone else was nervous in that team. You know, O'Reilly couldn't get his foot in the ball, Turnbull couldn't, Kyogo, Jota, um, Maida weren't in the game at all. McGregor was the one who really stood up at that stage and I thought that was a big moment in the game. It's easy to say that when you've won 4-1 and mm -hmm. people might go, oh, you won 4-1 anyway, but that was massive at the time. Oh, huge. There's a reason why he is the best player in Scotland mm -hmm. and he was voted that by his peers. Fantastic footballer and that's the thing, isn't it? If we, I mean, we've, we genuinely do have a proper leader in McGregor. A lot of people like you do see online maybe being a bit critical saying he's not vocal at Scott Brown, but He's a totally different footballer to him. Yeah. Totally different player, totally different style of leader. And the main thing is, in his first season as captain, he's going to be a champion, and that's all that matters. And it's a testament to how good he's been. He's been utterly fantastic for us, and he was my man in the match today. Who's Brilliant been, player. Who's been better, me or him, this season? Oh, that's, that's a really difficult question to answer. We'll I mean, if I'm really honest with you, answer it. by far and away, spent a lot of time here with him. Cal McGregor, easy. <laughs> right, we'll move on then. We'll chat about um, the, 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 kind of the game from that point onwards because Celtic were brilliant. I mean, as you say, it was a nervy start. Hearts got the goal. I, I, I was just waiting on that Hearts goal. I think they had a chance just before the goal. Then the goal came and everyone was just kind of scratching their heads. It, it was almost as if we hadn't woken up at that stage. McGregor then woke us up and from that point, Celtic today were, were brilliant. I mean... Our play down the left in that first half at times was brilliant. Maida was great. Greg Taylor, I thought, had another great game. Mm -hmm. And as you say, the minute we got that equaliser, which was, again, great play from Jota. Fantastic. We just we just kicked on for that stage. You kind of, did, did that settle you down? Were you still nervy? No, no. As soon as Jota scored, I went the mental. That's the thing as well. See, when we scored to like the goals today, every one of them, the, yeah. certainly the three, went as wild as I did last week when we scored against Rangers yeah. that's just how big this season is for us that's how invested all these are and that's how much you know there's a connection between the players and us as fans we're dying to see these guys do well and yeah. Jota was magnificent just it was a bit of solo play total brilliance but I thought shout out to Maeda because the ball was behind him yeah. and I think as well that a couple of things weren't coming off for him um, and he had to be like clinical and composed, and he was, and he put it past Craig Gordon at the time, and that was great as well. I'll come on to Craig Gordon later. He really worked me. Do it now if you want. Uh, it's fantastic what, to what, see what, he's put what, forward by him. 
What is it about him that winds us all up? Because I was wound up as well. I know John was wound up See, as well. See, if I'm honest, Craig Gordon was never... Everybody says Celtic legend, and I guess in the history books it will maybe look that way. But he was never invested in Celtic. Like, he was never emotionally all about us. It was always Craig Gordon plays for Craig Gordon. And see the day of that time wasting five minutes in? Yeah, it was a, Honestly, it was a, it was just a joke. Honestly, it just me up. It was a joke, and I was saying to John next to me, going, he's going to do it all the time. It was so important we scored that goal in the first half, because you didn't, amazingly enough, you didn't see him do it again after yeah. it. Craig, but, if you're watching... All I can say is well done for winding Stevie up. I'm so proud of you. Uh, nothing for me, Craig, but I um, hope you go home and it's a crap sleep night if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> it is what he does for hearts, isn't it? It's not. It, that's what winds you up. Because every time he comes... I don't want to spend the whole title winning video chatting about Craig Gordon, but it's funny, isn't it? I mean, he's a player who we should, we should love because he was our goalkeeper in the most successful team Celtic have had probably since the Lisbon Lions, dare I say it, winning you know, treble after that's treble. Just... How many was he there for? Two? For two. One, yeah. Aye, one, two. And, and then the third season, it was I don't have a, took over. Yeah, I don't have a great amount of time for him. It's weird. But anyway, nobody really cares too much about that. Who kind of stood out for you? Callum McGregor again. Callum right. McGregor first. What, what was he doing? Callum McGregor was just dictating everything. As soon as we, I mean, when we were in trouble, he just dragged us through that game. Mm-hmm. Very much just reminded me of a lot of his performance at Ibrooks. Just when we were down, just dragged us through it. What does that say about him? The fact that when the team's down, he's the one. Because Scott Brown used to do that. He the did. amount of times you would see Celtic struggling and Scott Brown would be the one playing well. Just tells you that he's the correct leader and Ange yeah. made the right decision for him to be captain. We build that team around him because he's just too important for us. Do you think we win the league if Callum McGregor's not the captain Absolutely this not. season? I agree. don't think I agree. we do that. Callum McGregor last season, I mean, you saw how mismanaged he was. And that was, I mean, his own form was poor. But he's just really raised his game. And a lot of that goes down to the manager. I think the manager's identified that we need to be a totally different team to what we were last season. Mm. More free-flowing, more attacking. And, you know, we've built that team around Callum. And he's been outstanding for us. There's no way that we win this league without him. So important to the team. And we're very lucky to have him. There's moments in that game and, and moments in this season overall when if we hadn't had Callum McGregor as a leader, I would have feared a little bit for where we were going. I know Joe Hart's a good leader. I know we've got a few other players who you would class as being leaders. I'm so glad McGregor is going to be the captain for this team going Never forward. Mind. We went and we were without him, weren't we, for a few games as well and this season. We almost went off a cliff, yeah. <laughs> and then he came back in for that Rangers game and look how we responded. Yeah, He was an animal in the best possible way. He's still wearing a mask, isn't he? Didn't he is still, today. right? I think he'd get that off soon. Who else impressed you today? I, I want to give a shout out to Maida. He's never the most technical footballer, you know, technically gifted footballer, and you feel it's always a bit of a slight on him. But you won't find a more effective player in that Celtic team at what he does. His mm-hmm. effort, his energy, and I think an underrated part of his game, his kind of positioning and his timing and runs is brilliant. And, you know, that goal he scored today was... There wouldn't have been anyone else in that team, I think, that would have been in that position that, that Maida was coming off the left-hand side. That's the exact kind of goal we saw in the YouTube compilations of him playing in Japan. Yeah, always moving into... The, it's the way Ange likes... He to, never stops. It's the way Ange likes his wingers, though, isn't it? He likes to see them drifting inside from um, far, like, far positions. Yeah. And that's what he did. It's a lot like Abada, how he scored his goals in the right two. But you're saying Maeda, who I thought was great. I thought Matt O'Reilly on the ball. There was yeah. a times off the ball, he was a wee bit lethargic and you're looking for more. Mm-hmm. But see, on the ball... He just was causing Hearts so many problems and it was a wonderful ball in to the back post when we made it 2-1. I think Jota headed that across and Kyogo put it in. Yeah, but Matt O'Reilly, definitely over the line. Ah, of, course, of course it was. And um, I was very, I was actually stunned that a wonderful Scottish referees... So you got a, all joking aside, it's a good call, isn't it? It was a good call. I was stunned. Yeah. I said to John that I was stunned that he actually did call it as that. But fair play to Donald Robertson. We'd never criticise him. No, no, him. I wasn't the ref. We'll, we'll, we'll give the it to the linesman well. ah, OK. Right, yeah. we'll never, we will criticise Don Robertson again then. No, but Matt O'Reilly did very well. And I think he took his goal so well as well today. On the ball, joy to watch. What do you think of Turnbull? But for first start since the, the League Cup it, final. And it was a high tempo game for Tumble, considering like, it's not a bottom six team. Hearts are physical and they do press. So it was a tougher game for them. But I think next season, Tumble gets a pre season and we'll probably see the best of them again. Because they start, I mean, last season, when you think about it, he had that pre season, took him a while to kick on and then it became so important for us. And the manager realised that as well. Mm. Look at what he weighed in with the goals and assists. Mm. So. He's been a big player this big season, player Tumble. This, oh, First have, half of the season. They've all, yeah. you know, all had their roles to play. Tumble next season will do a job, but he did okay. I think he's something different, isn't he? Because, you know, Hatati's a kind of industrious midfielder. Rogic and O'Reilly are, you know, have you ever seen those two in the same room? That's what I'm asking, because the two of them are just the same player. Yeah. And Turnbull's very different. He's, I'd say he's probably slightly more creative, maybe. Um, 
he takes a lot of touches. That's the only thing. I but think I think he, he's yeah. quite good at the old the old turning as well. That was a turn. I know. Right? I was waiting on that part again. Mm. I think what Tumble's good. Uh, Tumble's criticism is the pace. He's never going to be blessed with that. But I think Tumble's creativity and he can find a pass like a lot of other players in that team maybe can't. Yeah. But yeah, I've got no concerns with him. I think after what he's coming through with that injury again, he'll be fine when we go into next season. And more, we'll need him as well. Yeah. Second half was just like a, a party. It's a joy. Wasn't it? The third goal was a big one. Aye, that, that, was, that was that was a moment like we're we're in WhatsApp groups. I'm sure people watching this are in similar groups, and that was the moment for me when that O'Reilly, O'Reilly goal goes in off the post because he hit the post but just before that, wasn't it? Yeah, right, um, with, right, with, foot. With right foot. And when that third goal goes in, that's when you start thinking. You start yeah. allowing yourself, and I can't believe I'm actually saying. It. I know we've been saying it on the channel for a while, but when it actually happens, it's a bit different. We're going to win this league, and we deserve. We totally deserve it. Yeah. And when that third goal went in, that was just celebrating. Is that, that. the moment for you? Yeah, celebrating that as wildly as have you, what have you allowed changes. yourself to? You've obviously thought we're going to win the league, but have you allowed yourself to imagine that moment before it happened? I've allowed myself now to accept that I think we're going to be champions, and I don't care how we win it anymore. I don't care if we have to go to Tannadice and put in the hard work for it. Fine. Or tomorrow. But see tomorrow if Rangers do <laughs> drop points. Good. I really don't care how we win it. I just want it won now, and I'll celebrate it madly. Yeah. And I really will. And today was just emotional as well. Really yeah. was. Like I'm very glad that John, who I was sitting next to, didn't see me. But I did burst into tears at, just after the huddle. Um, it was such an emotional moment, just for everything this season. Oh, the, the fans huddle? Aye, but it was yeah. more for the fact that we're going to be champions. And it was just amazing to realise that. I think that's when I could accept it. Um, and I gave myself a wee moment before trying to get on with my hard man act again and act all cynical. We actually got a video of Stevie breaking down roll that now I'm joking we don't have that you got me a bit worried for a second there didn't you <laughs> Rito have been filming you during the second half um, my pal Lewis who's there made a good point to me before and I don't know how many people obviously there's another thing going on across the city and they've reached a, uh, I know a European final and part of you is maybe slightly going into the game today you're, you're, you've got some doubts because you're thinking how much are we actually going to enjoy this given what's going across the city and maybe there's a thing going on in your mind saying you know even if it doesn't feel great, we have to be seen to be enjoying it and be seen to, to love in every minute. There was no acting going on there at no, all. That that wasn't. was that was that was a genuinely, genuinely amazing moment. You know, for me, the moment at the end of the game, obviously we scored the fourth goal. Spoiler, Yakimakis again, one touch finish, full time. For me, the thing that got me was the players going into the huddle, you know, together. I don't know if it was quite a huddle, but they all certainly huddled together at full time. McGregor gathered them again. And then they walked around. The vast majority of the, the Celtic support had stayed at that point. And it was Ange giving it loudy with yeah. the fans and the players all hugging Joe Hart, giving it loudy, giving it that. I don't know what that was, but it was um, the, the players, as much as it's not over yet, we're not officially champions. Those were the celebrations of a yeah. team that knew the job was done and they knew that it's not going to be done here at Celtic Park officially. So that was their chance to celebrate. And genuinely... Like I didn't actually expect to. I mean, I, I didn't actually have tears running down my face, but I kind of, kind of had to check myself a little bit because it all kind of got a little bit too much for me at the end there. And I think it's all just because of this season. It's all been about winning the league, and I know other stuff's happened, but it's all been about that moment there. And actually, actually getting to experience that at the end with Ange celebrating winning a league, the players celebrating it, everyone inside Celtic Park together celebrating this moment after what we went through last year with no fans at all and all that murder you know I, I didn't know if it would live up to expectation but it absolutely did it did and I think you hit the nail on the head with what you said but especially about last season I mean last season was brutal and okay we finished second and we were dumped out cups and everything yeah but it was not being able to get to Celtic Park to vent and try and encourage the team because yeah. it's not just about coming to Celtic Park and it's, it's like a social aspect as well of as well as supporting the team and getting behind the manager and not being able to do any of that last season was infuriating just seeing that was like the scenes this season was just it's great amazing. and it's you never amazing. want and I don't think those scenes will ever be back for like last season I don't think we'll ever go through a season like that but for me, just seeing Ange at the very end and like when he was towards like 102 section and all that, sharp. All right. But he, but to be fair, I saw him and he was giving it loudy, wasn't he? He was giving it even loudy more so everywhere. than in the the kind of 110, 111. He was giving it loudy, and I think this is a manager that maybe some people have criticised because so maybe criticised us for backing them too heavily because we are pro Ange, and I think mm. we always will be. But 
like after the cup game and all that, we would be against Rangers, we weren't singing his praises. He got criticised there, and it was fair. Yeah. But for the most part, Ange has got it spot on. We've been behind him all the way. He's such an honest up front guy, and just seen him like can, the way that he has brought the players and the fans together. It's been him that's done it. He's brought so many people at Celtic together, and he deserves his moment. He deserves it to you know be lauded like that. Yeah. I love seeing it. I love seeing him going mental, and hopefully. That's just a warm-up act, and they can go even more mental at Tannadice and Fur Park because on no Celtic Park, sorry, yeah. they play Motherwell, Christ. That's that's going to be amazing as well. I mean, the next two games are still going to be class because we're going to win it on Wednesday, aren't we? I mean, I doubt we're going to lo- lose at Tannadice, and then you'll have next weekend as well. And, and Ange with the trophy and Ange doing his post-match speech is going to definitely have everyone in tears because you know I'm he's not going on to, the channel after <laughs> that one. Right? You know he's going to have a cracker. You're absolutely on the channel after that. No, but it was. Um, it was an amazing moment and that's why he came to Celtic as well. I think we always talk about Celtic being great for Ange. Sorry, the other way around. Ange being great for Celtic and Ange transforming Celtic. Celtic have been great for Ange as well and this is what he's craved his whole career. You know, the Aussies will know they love their football in Australia but they maybe don't have, you know, the, the incredible, incredible real passion from the whole public um, that we do in Scotland. I mean, we, they have so many other amazing sports that they're good at in Australia. Here it's football, and football's all we really have, and sometimes we're not very good at it. But Ange, you know, coming into this environment has, you know, people ask him about the pressure. He's loved every single minute of it, and he he would have been loving, yeah. you know, walking. People like Joe Hart as well, Jota, who couldn't get a game last season, who, who didn't have a home last season. They now have a home, and that was amazing. It was. All these players, every one of them have played a part in... They've bought in to what the manager's been trying to sort of introduce to them and they've been right behind him as well and the manager has transformed a lot of these guys. I mean like Cameron Carter Vickers, for example, he's is a guy one. he's another he's a guy who was just a ah, team like Spurs but just getting punted out and loan and loan and loan. Probably never felt like he was ever going to settle at a club and would ever be at a club like he witnessed the scenes that like he did today. I mean I'm, if you're Cameron Carter Vickers now and you've witnessed those scenes today, you're wanting more than that. Yeah. You're wanting more and more and you're going to have a hunger and an appetite for it and I hope that's going to play a part in where he ends up next season and I dearly hope it's with Celtic. Yeah, just amazing, amazing, amazing moments. I love just every minute of it. As I say, I had expectations for what it would feel like and it, it just surpassed every one of them. I thought the DJ got it spot on as well. He did, the, yes. One more time. I'll probably get copyrighted for, for that <laughs> cracking tune. Anything else you wanted? It's very hard after this to do one of these usual videos and analyse. Nobody the game, cares about the game. That's the only what I'm saying. Want to the talk game, about the, the game was, the game was an afterthought. It was just about how we feel emotionally, how we celebrated that, and I'm just so happy because it was for the start of the season. It was all about the league. It doesn't matter what any other teams, you know, did. It doesn't matter what other teams went on to achieve. It was about us winning that league. That was yeah. our bread and butter. And then we have to now build on that. We couldn't have any other cups this season and any progress in Europe was a bonus, but we have to build on everything by being the champions of Scotland first. Yeah, and I think we are now. I, I would say so. I, I, I doubt Celtic are going to lose their, their final two games by seven goals, and they're going to win their final three by four goals. Or well, well listen, take. Scottish referees and penalties. <laughs> you just don't know, do you? Maybe get eight penalties for Rangers tomorrow. Does it matter how we win it now for you? No, I said it. Doesn't care. You'd rather win it on Wednesday night. I, I would rather win it as soon as possible. So okay. if they drop points tomorrow, go on. On record, don't care how it's won. Just want You're to win in the away end, aren't you? <laughs> Ibrooks. <laughs> You're out of order. <laughs> I, away end at Ibrooks, Dundee United end. No, I'm not getting anywhere near that. I'll go to George Square and bide my time tomorrow to uh, <laughs> behave responsibly. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. Very happy, and thank you, Celtic, and thank you, Ange. And uh, I was going to say thanks to you, but I don't know what for. Uh, uh, thanks to me. Thanks to me. Nah. Nah. Um, we're going to do a live show tomorrow I think John signed up for that If we do indeed win the league tomorrow Stevie, I don't care what you're doing You're getting in for that as well Because we need to see tears But if not, we'll just do it with John And we'll maybe get you on next week or whatever. Fine, okay, I'll come, in, fine I'll come in for it Only if only if we, we manage to win the league tomorrow It was just amazing I hope wherever you're watching the game You've got a you know, a, a tear in your eye, a smile on your face. I hope you're having a wee drink and enjoying yourself because, as I said after, I think the game at Ibrooks, we deserve every single minute of this as supporters. Totally we do. Back this team to the help this season and they have delivered big time almost every single game. You know, honestly, you look at the high points this turn of the year and that there's been so many of them and the low points, there's, there's very few in 2022. So, apart from me on the channel, I mean, that's always a low point. Um, listen, I think we'll leave it there. Um, we've probably been on for about 20 minutes or so. Everyone, enjoy your evening. Celtic are going to be champions again. 
<laughs> we finished with a wee song. Nah, I'm not saying. If we win the league, when we do the league officially, I but no, right, no, okay. no. I'm going to finish with a song. Champions again, ole ole. Champions again, ole ole. Champions, Champions again. again. Champions, Champions again. again. Champions, Champions again, ole ole. You got Thank a song, you, Stevie. Thank you, everyone. We'll chat to you tomorrow.